Hey everybody, DJ Lou here, and up next I really want to talk about this Countryman E6 over-the-ear microphone. So when I got really serious about doing ceremonies and started investing in really high-quality mics, I wanted to find a really good solution that would work for the efficient, so this way I could mic up the efficient, and in many cases not even have to worry about micing up the couples. I of course had the stock uh, ME2 microphones from Sennheiser and it sounds really good, but I found out that um, especially with uh, the movement of the efficient, sometimes that could create unwanted noise, um, even with the, the best placement possible. And I also found that you know after certain distances, even though it's an omnidirectional microphone, that sometimes the voices would fall out far enough that I just couldn't pick them up well when I'm trying to capture them and not having a mic on the couple. So after I did a lot of research, I stumbled across the Countryman E6 microphone and I actually found um, some fairly positive reviews, but also a couple mixed bag reviews as well. On the positive side, people were really raving about the quality of the sound that the mic picks up, the uh, absolute tininess of the mic uh, compared to a lot of the other mics that were on the market. I do have to agree with both groups of people that were reviewing it. For one, it's incredibly small, it it's just works really great, but I did initially have to spend some time to kind of ring it out and really get a, a good sense of what the qualities of the mics were and uh, where to you know, do my equalization to really bring the best out of it. All right, so what do you get when you get a Countryman E6, and actually really any of the Countryman products? First you get this fairly uh, tough shell case. Uh, that comes with it. You open it up and you get a couple items. Of course, you get your uh, E6 itself. Um, mine, of course, is, has the Sennheiser attachment, but you can get this for Audio Technica, Shure, um, and a number of other brands. The cable itself is two millimeters thick, so it's incredibly small. Um, if not mistaken, you get this in three colors, black, tan, and white. There might be a fourth color as well, but I can't quite remain, uh, remember um, if that's the case. You also get a number of protective caps uh, that come with it. And each one of those caps has a different uh, sound curve on it. Uh, this one's a very crisp, so it brings out the highs. Um, I settle for the flat uh, cap on these. Uh, it seems to be uh, the best uh, overall um, use. There has been a couple times where um, it was just a really muffled sound with like being really windy and all that. And I still went with this, so I had a windsock on this and also a crisp cap on it. Um, there's enough room in here. I actually put my ME2 in this case as well, so everything stays nice protected. I also keep my uh, ME2 clips um, up here as well. Um, but it definitely has a nice high quality um, um, finish. Um, in this packaging and everything, and it represents a very high quality microphone. All right, now as you see, I magically have the Countryman on my ear right now, and I want to do an A-B comparison first um, through my task cam just to show what the natural profile of the microphone is um, before it goes through amplification and now through a speaker. So first off, we're at the Sennheiser ME2, which coincidentally, I actually use this for all my vlogs as well. I always kind of capture this through my task cam. I plug it in. It's a great sound. It's uh, pretty neutral. I don't have to worry about doing uh, much in post at all with my voice. And it's just been a very reliable microphone. But let's compare this over to the Countryman E6. So we're now over to the Countryman E6. And you could tell there's an ever so slight uh, sound profile difference uh, between this and the ME2. Both, I think, sound great um, in an instance like this. I would always go to the ME2 for something like vlogging. I wouldn't necessarily need to have this over the ear. But it just goes to show that with this incredibly small uh, tip um, that, you know, everything comes through with this really small cap. You know, then again, this cap is a neutral cap, you know, compared to the size of the ME2. You know, the fact that the sound is virtually uh, the same, you know, with some subtle differences is, I think, an incredible uh, technological achievement. And just to compare for one more time, we're back over to the ME2. So this is great coming through the task scan, but let's go ahead. Let's do a real world test. We'll add my handheld microphone in the mix and uh, let's go to that beautiful beam footage. All right, so the best way to do this is going to be an ABC test um, right directly to my speakers. As you see behind me, I have my EV50 set up, typical ceremony fashion. I have uh, two microphones built in right now. One is this for this handheld, the other is for uh, my lav pack. 
I'm going to flip between the uh, Countryman E6 and my Sennheiser ME2. Um, and of course, this microphone as well, just so you can hear the comparison uh, between them. I have the Tascam uh, recorder, uh, just about a foot and a half, maybe about two feet away from the EV50 uh, capturing all this. So you should hear any feedback or anything like that. Again, right now, I want to say I'm about 19 feet uh, away between the two. So um, let's uh, compare. All right, well, here's how the ME2 sounds uh, through the speakers. Uh, right now, my lav pack is set for negative 27 on sensitivity. I have actually brought down uh, my gain ever so slightly on uh, my uh, Soundcraft. This is just a little bit more uh, pickup on it than compared to the Countryman itself. Um, you notice that the sound is a little bit on the hollow side. I haven't ringed this out, so you're actually possibly hearing a little bit of uh, some feedback on the very high end. It's a really small room. I'm actually kind of, you know, in two chambers right now. This is my living room. Right behind me is, uh, you know, my office. And, you know, it does pick up some errant sounds and whatnot. I have had some ceremonies in kind of tight spaces, not quite this tight, but pretty tight, where, you know, I got some very unwanted, uh, you know, reverb noise and whatnot uh, from the, the natural aesthetics. But uh, this is how it sounds through the ME2. Now let's switch over to the Countryman. All right, so here's the sound of the Countryman E6. Now, uh, comparatively to the ME2, they're, they're actually pretty close. I want to say that the Countryman is just a hair uh, deeper on this. Um, but again, all this comes down to equalization. Um, I have not ringed out for um, this room for either mic. Uh, my settings are general settings, though, where I will cut over the low-pass filter. I want to say it's like about... 150, 160, um, just to kind of get all that rumble out of the way is not needed for something like a microphone like this. I also tweak out the very high end where there's some uh, natural feedback that comes through, uh, especially on these EVs. It's a little bit higher than where my Yamahas uh, were in comparison. Um, but as you can tell, this really sounds just as comparable um, as the ME2. And I want to say that the Countryman has an advantage as well, where even though it's omnidirectional, um, it's also generally still kind of pointing in a specific direction. So a lot of times with the officiants, I'll just say, you know, when the uh, couple is saying their vows, you know, just tilt your head a little bit towards them, just gives um, a, a better shot to get a clear shot to the couples. You know, if it is windy outside, then the, the lav goes on to the, uh, the groom. Um, if it is uh, a really decent day out, you know, it's just nothing but um, the, this headset, the, this countryman. And I have flipped sometimes. I, I have had um, in previous years where the, uh, the officiant just did not feel comfortable with the headset, so I just went ahead and put on the ME2. But again, sound is uh, just as good. Again, I would say that the ME2 has, I want to say it's just slight more difficulty picking up, you know, sounds from a distance. So if I'm trying to pick up the couple's uh, vowels, it tends to be a little bit harder just because of microphone direction and whatnot. You know, having the microphone up here by the face gives me a little bit more of an advantage. You know, size-wise, you can tell by this photo, this isn't that distracting as all. It's definitely nowhere near as distracting as, say, a handheld microphone. You know, because having this in a photo, you know, not where you want to be. But um, other than that, you know, it is a, a great sound. I will say that um, position of the microphone is just as critical with the headset as it is with the lab. If it's obstructed, if it moves up, if it moves down, you know, you're not going to get as good of a sound as if it's properly aligned. Um, I will typically mic up the officiant, you know, I want to say like a good 10, 15 plus minutes prior and then just before we go on, I make sure I readjust, make sure everything looks good. You know, as people's heads move, as they're walking around, you know, things will kind of get, you know, bounced around and not necessarily in a great position. But let's uh, just compare this one more time. Again, we're right now with the uh, Countryman E6. All right, now we're back over to the ME2. And again, you know, I want to say that the mids are just a little bit more prevalent um, in this. Um, it's also, I think, resulting in a little bit more echo um, than with the Countryman. And again, the dynamics of this room is just not that great. So it is picking up a lot of those errant sounds. I can tell when I move my head a little bit, I'm starting to hear some of that higher end uh, feedback. Um, it is very critical that you know you ring out for every event 
Um, but in this case, I just want to kind of give a fair comparison uh, between the two. So again, we're back over to the uh, ME2. Let's do one more time over to the Countryman. And we're back over to the Countryman now. Well, there's a video and I hope you liked it. If so, hit that thumbs up, click subscribe, do whatever social media is telling you to do right now. If you like more comparison tests like this and just good tech reviews and whatnot, go ahead, check out my four DJs only playlist.